Hello, everyone. So I wanted to take a moment to quickly go over um, Lodi. So I don't want to take too, too much of your time, but I did want to go over a little bit of Lodi and maybe break it down to where it's a little bit easier for you to understand and um, apply. So um, just a quick review over Lodi. Um, first of all, Lodi, it stands for Levels of Technology Integration. And just kind of a quick review over each of the uh, six levels. First of all, if you're at Lodi Zero, there's no technology being used whatsoever. Lodi One is called Awareness. If you want to have something that's really easy to remember when it comes to Lodi One, if technology is being used, it's strictly being used for direct instruction. The teacher is the one who is mainly using the technology. Lodi Two, that one's Exploration. Um, the key word to think about when about how technology is used, it's used to supplement. It's not used to be an active part of student learning. It's more so there is like extra support or an extension activity, but not an actual part of the instruction itself. Lodi 3, this is when it starts really shifting over to being um, into the lesson, and that level is called infusion. This is when you really are starting to see the higher order thinking skills as well as more student engagement and involvement. Lodi 4, integration. This is when we're seeing where technology is used to have students engage in real world and authentic activities and tasks. Lodi 5, expansion. This is when you're seeing students either collaborating with um, others outside of the classroom or even having where they have an audience that's um, beyond just their peers in the classroom or even at the school. Lodi 6, this is the highest level, refinement. From start to finish, it is a tech-rich experience. So each of these words kind of helps me kind of associate what to expect in a um, in a lesson based on the Lodi level. So again, Lodi zero, no technology. Lodi one, direct instruction. Lodi two, technology is supplementing. Lodi three, higher order thinking skills and student engagement are starting to be seen. Lodi four, this is when we're really starting to see the real world authentic activities. Lodi five, there's student collaboration and also the potential of an audience. And then Lodi six, from start to finish a tech rich experience. So what does this look like um, when it comes to a real life example? So for Lodi Zero, um, well actually for all of these levels, I'm going to kind of show you how it would look in a social studies classroom because obviously that's my experience. So what does this look like in a social studies classroom? So I decided to show you what these levels would look like for environmental issues. So if it's Lodi Zero, this is where you're seeing students just using the textbook and using worksheets and notes to learn about this topic. All right, Lodi One, a great example of this would be uh, teachers are presenting a PowerPoint presentation about environmental issues while students are just taking notes on a standard note chart, graphic organizer, you name it. Lodi Two, teachers are having students create a flyer via publisher listing, you know, environmental issues and causes once notes are completed. So again, it's not really something that's a directly a part of the lesson. It's, oh, you're done with the notes. Um, you're done with the activity we're doing in class. We'll now go ahead and you can create a product just to kind of make it nice and pretty with the notes you got. Lodi 3. So instead of direct instruction really being involved, Teachers are trying to have where students are on their own looking things up. Um, but again, it's not really student driven. It's more so teachers having them look for things, um, just doing their own independent research, looking for causes and impacts, environmental issues, and they're just completing a standard note chart or graphic organizer. Um, but again, it's, it's really just starting to get there. Lodi four. This is kind of what makes a strong distinction between Lodi 3 and Lodi 4, because I know some people get it confused um, because WebQuest can seem just like standard research, but a key thing with WebQuest is when students are doing WebQuest, they're taking part in a role and they're going through a role that appears authentic or the product they're creating 
seems authentic. Like for example, in this case, um, for Lodi 4, they're doing a web quest and they're taking on an authentic role as an environmental scientist who's investigating causes and impacts of the issues and developing solutions. So this product could be a, um, a podcast. This could be a, um, a video. This could be a presentation, but regardless, they're engaging in a role that has been either inspired or is modeled after an authentic role or authentic task, or they're creating a product that could potentially be something that could be used by in real in the real world. So Lodi 5, taking it a step further, this is where we're going to be seeing that um, collaboration and communication. So one of two things could happen in Lodi 5. Students could get information from Skype from an environmental scientist and or they could work with other students um, from other schools via Flipgrid Pals to kind of work together on the uh, web quest. If you notice, a lot of times what happens with the Lodi is you build off of the um, the Lodi before that, or sometimes they kind of work together and kind of overlap, and you will see that. Um, then Lodi 6, this is where you're seeing that tech-rich environment from start to finish. Um, students are creating uh, an environmental issues website. That's the final prog product. They're creating a website. However, it goes back to these. They're having where they're communicating um, with their Flipgrid pals to, to create it, and they're sharing it, and they're still completing a web, oops, sorry, and they're still creating a web quest while they're doing this research. So pretty much for Lodi 6, start to finish tech use, they're completing a web quest while collaborating with other students, but the final product is environmental issues website. So you're seeing a lot of these things. Lodi 6 is almost like it's building, building, building off of Lodi 4 and Lodi 5. So when in doubt, um, I know back during uh, the professional development I had led back um, in the end of November, early December, um, I had given you all this flow chart. And for me, this really helps me to self-reflect but also identify where I can go from here. It was the um, Lodi flowchart, and I have this posted on my professional learning blog as well for you to access if you um, need an extra copy. But for me, this is what I use to kind of figure out, okay, where am I and where can I go from here? So for example, if I went through the flowchart and I noticed um, strictly at Infusion, or this is like the kids are just doing re research on an environmental issue or on um, a historical um, problem. What I could do is I can amp it up a little bit by making it more so a web quest where kids are, you know, doing more of an authentic task. And they're, I could even have them reach level five, which would be along the lines of where they can either, you know, engage in conversation with students in another class. So that's one reason why I like the flow chart. It kind of shows you where you are and where you can go from here. So, I don't want to take too much of your time, but if you're still having some questions about how Lodi works, or if you would like some more report, um, some more support, excuse me, or if you would like some more resources, there's three ways um, you can reach out to me. So first of all, if you just have any questions, particularly relating to Lodi, or if you need some more support or clarifications from me, please reach out to me via email. This is my email right here. Um, also, if you just want to kind of collaborate ever. Um, I'm starting to branch out professionally using this Twitter handle. Also, I'm trying to post more resources and have more uh, things that can be used in regards to LOTI. And also, I'm, I'm going to be leading a web quest professional development soon, so I'll be having a lot of those things posted on my professional learning blog. So, if you need any help or if you have any questions or you need some more clarification, please let me know. Um, but yeah, I look forward to hearing from you and to working with you in the future. Thank you.